Hey everybody, Cabot Phillips here with campusreform.org. We are joined today by a very special guest, someone that is dealing with some crazy stuff on their campus. We have Austin Tong from Fordham with us. Austin, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Cabot, for having me. Thank you, yeah. Thank you, Campus Reform. Absolutely. So your story is one that has been getting traction online. Uh, you posted uh, a message on your Instagram, a few messages the school did not like, and you're under fire now. Uh, for people that haven't read the story, can you give just a, a, a description of what happened um, so, so people can hear? So basically, I posted two Instagram posts, one of which is uh, Officer David Dorn, who was uh, unfortunately killed. And I was not happy with that, so I posted that. And what happened was the next day on Instagram, posted about uh, myself in my backyard with my legally owned AR-15. And I posted that in remembrance of what happened 31 years ago to democratic activists in China and why that event tells us in America and tells people around the world why people should be armed, why we should be grateful in this country we have the Second Amendment to protect ourselves from government and keep them in check. But the school and the, the mobs, the bad people, I call them the bad people, they connected that, they reported me to the school and the school uh, maliciously connected the two posts as I'm racist and I'm threatening. But I assure everyone I never threatened anyone and that's just ridiculous and it's an infringement upon my free speech and the school's own policy, the school's own policy of free code. And so you were making the posts, uh, your, your post, we'll put it up on the screen here so people can see it. Uh, but, you, but your one post was telling people they were hypocrites uh, for not caring about David Dorn. Can you describe that a little bit more? What, what you were saying when you were saying that people were hypocrites? Well, you know, what happened was the officer was killed. He was a fine man. And what happened was, you know, nobody cared about him because perhaps he didn't fit their political agenda or criteria. But, you know, I'm just a normal person. I'm not the president. I just said, I just said it because I was emotional about it. I wasn't happy. He was a fine officer. He was a black man. And he should be cared about, but nobody cared. So I thought people were very hypocritical. And, you know, but that, how is that racist? I don't understand. It's just my care. And I really love this country. I love our freedoms. And so did Officer Dorn. He didn't deserve it. And so the school, when you posted the other photo holding the weapon, which the school in the letter to you claimed was an, an automatic weapon, which was ridiculous. It shows they don't actually understand firearms for one, but they, they said it was an automatic weapon. And then they didn't like your caption, which said, don't tread on me. Uh, what was your thought when you were posting that? Can you describe a little bit more your intention behind that post? Well, first of all, I think the school thinks, and a lot of people think that every weapon you see is a nuclear weapon. <laughs> like it's gonna blow up the world. That's not the case. And I think people don't understand something. You have a weapon to defend yourself. You have a weapon to defend your country, defend your society, defend your freedoms. It's not because you want to hurt other people. It's not the case. And the school, I explained to them in the hearing, I explained to them, I had a hearing that solely don't tread on me is the people's voice against a uh, powerful government. And I even said with the hashtag that I posted, that it's, it has nothing to do with the recent events. It's just as a citizen in this country, how we should remember that, how we should really appreciate that. I really, I really like the gun and you know, all of this is happening, I didn't expect it. I just, it's, it's America, we just post. I didn't hurt anyone, I didn't break the law. Yeah, and so you, you talk about Tiananmen Square in your post and can, can, for people maybe in America that don't see the tie between Tiananmen Square and the fight for constitutional rights in America. Can you talk a little bit about what you see as the tie between the two? Well, what I see is that, what I see is across the world and in many places, uh, you have people who are rising up to uh, liberate themselves, to open up the country more. And what the people don't see in this country is they already have the things that the people I was remembering have. They have those things. And that's why they have the power to cancel me, to, to do everything they're doing, because they already have it. They don't understand that. And I think uh, my opinion is they don't appreciate, they're not grateful. And really, they should check their privilege. Uh, American privilege, that's what they have right now. That's they have. 
that's American privilege, the freedom to, to speak out and use their voice. Uh, and so can you talk a little bit about, you, you got the letter from the university. Uh, what was your reaction when you got the first official letter from the school telling you that you had, was it a disciplinary hearing they were subjecting you to? Well, listen to this, the dean called me and he said, usually he doesn't call regarding the hearing notice, but you know, he knows I'm a big mouth. So he knows I might post it online. So he called me, he says, he, he usually doesn't do this. He called me to warn me beforehand and he sent me the letter and myself, my family, we were, uh, what can you say? We were baffled, we were baffled. And I told, I told the dean, I told him, I said during the hearing, I said that not even in dictatorships does this happen. This is outrageous to happen even in America. I mean, what am I having a hearing for? And not just that, why are public safety officers coming to my house at midnight to check if I'm a safe person? I, this is hypocritical, you know why? Because you had a Fordham grad student who threw a Molotov cocktail at a police car or something like that, and Fordham didn't say anything. I didn't hurt anyone. There were people who hurt people and nothing happened. So what I thought was, you know, ridiculous, and I did a lot for Fordham. I went on Voice of America, you know, the federal broadcast, yeah. to talk about the school. I did a lot of stuff, but they're traitors. They're not loyal. And they don't go along with their mission statement, which is we need rigorous thinking in the school and free speech should be protected. That's what they said. So I was not too surprised, but you know, I'm still very uh, angry about it. And so I had not heard this part uh, at all. The, what you had people come to your house to check on you. So you think that will happen in the Soviet Union or North Korea? No, it happened here in the United States. Uh, you had people, uh, I don't know if they had arms, uh, but they were public safety officers. They called me around 10, something like that at night. They said, we're outside, can we come in? And we were like, what? But you know, what do we expect? You know, we're not criminals. We didn't think, we didn't think with a criminal mindset. We didn't know what was happening. And they came, they came inside, but I have to say they were nice people. The officer was very nice. Uh, however, you know, he was just doing his job. But he, they asked me if I, why I purchased the gun, where, you know, they asked all sorts of questions you would expect from like the FBI. It's none of their business. It's none of their business. But, you know, what's even uh, to me more disappointing is after they left, uh, the officer called me and he said that, Austin, you should delete the post. They pressured me to delete the post. And, you know, I told them I have my free speech. They can't infringe upon that. And he said that if I take it down, then this matter will be put behind us and I won't be having more trouble. And that's what they told me because, you know, after that, you know, I thought about it. It's just the Instagram post. I didn't expect it to have this kind of reaction. I thought, let me just take it down so we won't have any more problems. I still have a future. We have futures. And I took it down. But that wasn't the case. And I say this to be clear. They said it not on a personal level. They said that they were representing the university. So, so these were officers representing the university. Right. And they, they emphasized that when they told me to delete it. They emphasized that. So, and also, uh, another detail is they said, the officer said, I'm not a danger. I'm not intimidating. And I'm not threatening, which are the charges I were charged with. So uh, the university lied and lied and is not consistent and didn't even explain why they charged me. Mm. And so moving forward now, where, where do things stand at the moment with the university? I have no idea. They haven't talked. You know, I contacted medias. You contacted me. Mm. Uh, we don't know what's going on right now. And right now I'm waiting for to see if they'll respond. And they gave me the deadline to July 23rd, which is I have to accept the terms, which is uh, I, I can't go to campus and I have to attend inclusion courses. What the hell is that? So I don't know you, what that is. Can you touch on that a little bit more on what the university is telling you that you have to do? Because I think that's another part of this. Well, they said, I'm, first of all, they charged me with two things, which is hate crime bias. I don't even know what bias is. And uh, the second thing is intimidation threatening. me. I didn't threaten anyone. And my punishments were I'm banned from campus, but they were so nice. I can take online courses. They're so nice. 
and I have to take inclusion courses, mandatory inclusion courses. I call it political re-education. And I have to write an apology letter to the university. But to be fair, they said they won't publish it. It's just to them, you know, but how nice of them. But that's the thing. I have to accept those terms by the 23rd or face suspension or expulsion. But let's see what happens. So at the moment, you are not allowed on your campus? No. And frankly, I don't want to go there. So in the future, are you, I mean, are you still going to keep going to Fordham or, or has this made you reconsider anything? Well, Kabe, that's a great question. But, you know, we'll have to see if they suspend me. If they don't suspend me, then we're going to see. But I do think we will take legal action for these things and also for, uh, what's the word, defamation, yeah. smearing. Uh, it's, and it's not just about me. You know, you contacted me. There were hundreds of people. I'm sure thousands of people saw this. A lot of love from people across the country, friends and family. And I really appreciate that. But, you know, people are not happy with this. And at first it was about me. And I saw this reaction and I thought, you know, we need to tell these institutions. And that's what you do. You tell these institutions that they can't do this. Our rights should not be infringed upon. We have free speech in this country. And what they did is an explicit attack on free speech mm. and right. Critics will say, oh, it's a private university. You, you, they're not bound by the First Amendment. That's not, that's not just the case because they have free speech codes. And if they so explicitly go against their own free speech codes, what, what does that mean for the country? What does that mean about these powerful establishment institutions, how they view free speech? Mm. What if they still keep in power? Are we still going to be the country we know of? So I will be doing this for everyone. And I probably will sue them for the charges. I'll probably will sue them for the smearing, not just myself, but people who are silenced, the people who came to me and said, what I'm doing is for all of them. Yeah. And Austin, I think, uh, you know, I, I say what I'm sure many of our viewers and readers think and, and just saying thank you. Um, most people in your situation would just bow down. They would immediately, you know, not want to make any fuss about it. They wouldn't want anyone to get in trouble. And I think the fact that you're standing up for your First Amendment and Second Amendment rights uh, is really inspiring. And I know I've, I'm fired up right now. I want to do whatever I can to help you. I know a lot of other people are going to do that as well. They want to help you. So um, I, I want to make sure that we're keeping up to date. So for our viewers and readers, we're going to continue to update all of you on this story as it progresses. We're going to make sure that, that everything Austin's dealing with that, that you guys are aware of. Um, and Austin, thank you so much for, for telling this story. And again, we're going to keep everyone updated. This is not the last you've heard from Austin. Uh, we're going to make sure everyone is, is aware of what's going on because it is wrong what's happening. No students should have to choose between their constitutional rights and getting a college education. No students should have officers showing up at their home uh, you know, with, as a show of force to try and intimidate. No students should be told what they can and can't say because students might have their feelings hurt. And you have every right to, to do everything you did. And uh, we're pulling for you here. So Austin, thank you so much. Uh, for joining us and uh, at that we will wrap it up thank you thank you cabot i really appreciate it